Uh, tell, tell us about where, you know where the seeds you know in your mind started about the potential of you know doing a solo album and you know the evolution of the way life goes. Well, I mean, I started thinking about a solo record as early as the mid '90s when the whole music scene changed, and you know, Cinderella and you know, pretty much most of our peers were left without an outlet for our music because the whole scene had changed with the with grunge coming in and the Seattle thing, and labels were dropping bands like Flies, and uh, you know, even bands that had generated them, you know gazillions of dollars you know it was just like this sudden changing of the guard so i started thinking about it then and that's when i relocated to nashville and started writing with people here and uh i had to take a break from the working on a solo record <clears throat> at that time because cinderella was offered another record deal um, by a major label in 98 shortly after i moved here so i put my solo record on the back burner and just poured everything into the steel with um and this record and preparing for a record that never happened it was never recorded and the the deal and the relationship between us and the record company went south and ended up in courts and it was just got very ugly so that was a mess for years and we were restricted from recording with each other um under the re-record restrictions with the contract and the lawsuit and everything that happened so in the in the aftermath of all of that is when I came back to my soul, the idea of a solo record. It was around 2003. And the record started as not being a record. It was more like, I just want to make music that has nothing to do with labels, no lawyers involved, no bullshit, no, none of, nothing like what I just went through. And I started writing with my wife, Savannah, and some writers here in town that I like, and there were some musicians here that I really liked and we just worked on it piecemeal like a little bit at a time like go out and record a few songs here a few there and take a break and you know for months at a time and come back and do some more and it didn't start out as being a record it was just about making music for the sake of making music and over the course of nine years of doing that I ended up with 14 tracks that I really loved and felt like a record and that's when we decided to put those together and master them and we went out and shopped the finished product to labels and found an, an incredible home with memory v records who have been very supportive of the record um and released it and have been doing a great job with it so must have been so that's how it came about that's the way life went <laughs> must have been incredibly liberating to get back to where you were as a teenager and making music for the love of it as opposed to the whole pressure in the machine and the contracts and the you know all that yeah and i mean i've always made it for the right reasons i, I don't want to give the impression that i haven't i've always made the kind of music that i wanted to make and then but it was it i just didn't want anyone breathing down my neck you know with a deadline or contractual obligation or any of that so that's why the decision to just kind of record music for the sake of recording music and not even I mean, I, through, you know, I would say about halfway through the nine years, I started thinking, well, maybe there's a record here, you know, and, you know, maybe that intention started seeping in. But in, you know, the first few years we were working on it, man, it wasn't about like, hey, we're going to release this. Or we didn't care. We didn't care if anyone ever even heard it. So, but it slowly evolved into something that was like, wow, you know, this feels like a record. And, you know, it was like a healing process from all the crap I'd been through because, um, you know, there was, there was a lot of water under the bridge. So, yeah. Well, it, it's an amazing record. We can we can hear your love for, you know, the '60s and '70s and the Beatles and the Stones and and so much great music in there. But sounds sounds contemporary, you know, and how you've made it. Um, obviously, solid grounds. Not enough. Cold day in hell. Flower song. Ain't that a bitch? It's you know, a lot of great, great songs. Like I say, we play on the radio every week. What What are the songs that you get the most feedback from and you're most proud of? Any any stories behind those or, or anything special? Well, I mean, I, I think that we've, we've done well in the singles that we've picked so far because there are certainly songs that people connect to and really like. Uh, Solid Ground and the Flower Song specifically, um, you know, people have really connected to. 
and they've gotten great airplay, and uh, we've gotten a lot of support out there on those. And you know, they go down great live, and they 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 sit alongside the Cinderella material in the show uh, very well with the solo band. So, um, but you know, having now now that I'm on social media, which I wasn't for years, and I've got a Facebook and a Twitter, you know, you get so much feedback now from fans, which is really cool. And, you know, every day there's someone saying, you know, well, well, Ask Me Yesterday is my favorite song, or Thick and Thin is, or It's Not Enough. Or, so um, you know, it seems that the whole record is resonating with people. And, uh, you know, that's a, that's a good feeling after having spent so much time on it. Sure. And, and I know you did the Letterman show, and you did some uh, some dates with Hailstorm, you know, a couple months back. What, what, what does it feel like to... Um, you know, have this uh, acceptance, pe- people opening the door and, you know, uh, give, giving you this lane to run in with the with the solo album without the whole Cinderella, you know, baggage? Uh, I mean, it's just been really inspiring, you know, to, um, to have, um, it, it's all a result of finally being able to release some new music, you know, because Cinderella, you know, tried, as, as we did, you know, had a lot of obstacles and obviously, like you said, a lot of, of, of baggage. Uh, fair or unfair, there, there's baggage attached to everyone from our decade and genre. Um, so the solo record um, is inspiring to me because it's the first new music I've had out in a long time, and it was a long time coming, and it was a lot of work. And it has opened up some new avenues and opportunities that have just been amazing. You know, uh, playing Letterman, that was the first late night show that I had ever done. We never even did one with Cinderella. So that was a lot of fun. And we've been, the, the record has taken us to, you know, new places out on tour in terms of getting to play with artists like Hailstorm, like you mentioned, and uh, Sammy Hagar. And we, you know, we played with, um, you know, some more contemporary artists this year. We, we were on the uh, main stage with Kid Rock at Rocklahoma this year. And we played the BFD in Dallas with Five Finger Death Punch and The Pretty Reckless. And, you know, it's been, you know, getting to mix it up a little bit more. And uh, it's really been, uh, I'm really grateful to have this kind of new shot of life, you know, <laughs> as, as a result of releasing uh, a new record. So it's, it's been a lot of fun. Well, it's it's so great to hear the new music. And like I say, we, we loved your music for, for many years. Um, what, what, what is the future for, for Cinderella, and what's the future now that uh, it took you so many years to make this solo album? What's, what's next? What can we look forward to in the future? Well, we're, we're on uh, just, uh, we just finished up our dates for 2014 with the solo band, but we will be touring next year with the solo band again um, behind the, the way life goes. And uh, the label has plans for more singles released next year that they're going to work and we're going to tour all through probably next summer maybe even into the fall with the solo band so that's that's the immediate plans for the future and uh, beyond that we'll see 